Today, we're going to take a look at the PE security control family. Enjoy. All right, so here is the NIST 800-53 Rev 5 security control family. So these are categories of security controls. Uh, security control is a measure that you put in place to minimize or reduce risk. So such measures could be physical and environmental protection controls. All right, so we're going to look at NIST 800-53A, which is the guide for assessing security controls and this is the same guide that assessors will use to assess security controls so here they start off with p e1 so remember like i said before p, the dash one controls anything you see uh, dash zero one deals with policies and procedures and they're looking for certain criteria making sure there are roles and responsibilities, certain things are defined in there. There's a scope, management, commitment, and things of that nature, all right? So that is typically what you would use for um, closing out this uh, control. To satisfy this control, you would look for policies and procedures that deal with physical security. All right, so now let's look at the next one. It says physical access authorization so in this document is telling you hey for this control we're looking for a list of individuals with authorized access to the facility where the system resides or has been uh, developed okay so you're going to look for a list so usually that will be a printout uh, from a system or an Excel spreadsheet or a document that has the um, list of authorized individuals, okay? And uh, here it's saying the list of authorized individuals with authorized access to the facility has been approved. So that particular list will have something where the authorizer signs it, okay? Um, here is talking about where uh, that list is maintained. Uh, so it could be maybe a SharePoint site or a particular system, OneDrive, where it's maintained and uh, you know there's permissions there so no one else can access it. Um, here is talking about the credentials that are issued to people going into the facility. So maybe that could be a PIV card or you know an ID or a badge or something that grants them that they scan that grants them access to the system and here it's talking about is there a, a list with authorized users and it, is that list reviewed and if so what is the frequency is this list reviewed monthly is it reviewed annually they want to know um, that when you're reviewing the list to make sure that no one who is on that list uh, no unauthorized person is on that list maybe for example someone got fired someone left the company is that person's name still on the list you know so uh, they're looking for some type of review so uh, evidence for that would be either um, screenshot of a meeting invite or email um, that talks about the meeting or meeting notes for that meeting and the actual uh, documents that we use to review. Individuals are removed from the facility access list when access is no longer required. So you'll be looking for an email uh, that shows that someone has left the organization and he's at his or her access needs to be revoked and then you could subsequently show a list, an updated list, maybe an old list that had the person's name on there, and then an updated list that shows that the person's name is no longer on there. So as, as an assessor, that's what you might want to look for 
for a piece of evidence. And most of these things are self-explanatory, okay? Physical access um, methods. So they're saying the methods they uh, uh, recommend are to examine, interview, and test. So a good way to remember this acronym is TIE, T-I-E. Access my position or role. So physical access to the facility where the system resides is authorized based on position or role. So they want to make sure there's role-based access. So um, not just anyone has access to that facility. Maybe there is a facility that has the server for the maintenance system. So only members of the maintenance group should have access to uh, that facility. Or maybe only uh, maintenance supervisors or uh, you know people who have maintenance tasks should have access to the facility. Uh, two forms of identification. So here it's saying like if a visitor is coming, what are the two forms of identification that that visitor would need to present to gain access to the facility. So that the two forms of identification need to be uh, defined in a document. Uh, so your physical access uh, policy and procedure. So it could be maybe a driver's license or um, an ID card, um, you know, or passport, depending on the facility and uh, the security attached to that facility but there should be a list where all the acceptable forms of identifications are specified and the two forms that are acceptable need to be uh, defined in there so you would look for that as um, evidence okay I have a cybersecurity course called the security control assessor course this course trains you on how to become a security control assessor, also known as an SCA or a SCA. Now, with this training, it's going to show you step by step on the job training what a security control assessor does, how the security control assessor prepares for an assessment. If you don't know who a security control assessor is, a security control assessor is one who assesses security controls. We're also on IG at CyberFirst Solutions. Thank you.